Well, I, I've got a, a number of catchphrases I picked up from my dad, but I feel as though I've just about doubled my knowledge with regard to, be careful, cowboy, you might double your knowledge. But I've learned a ton here. Listen, Cody and I talked pregame, postgame, in between innings, if you will. And uh, this guy knows his stuff, man, especially with running a business and everything you got to deal with, how you train your employees and everything that goes into just being having a successful business that we all really want. Everybody either wants to work for a successful business or own one. And if everybody had their choice, I think most people would say, if I have to own one, that would be all right. But really on the ball knows what he's doing. So uh, give it up for Cody, everybody. And that's why you can see the reviews he's got are so good. And he's just an all-around expert business owner specializing in electric, which uh, obviously is very vital and important for what we do on our little planet here. Uh, with that, we start, we let in with a little bit. We talked about the first question I like to start off the second show with very often is, what is the biggest mistake that consumers often make? And you came up with an interesting answer that we talked about a little pregame. That was it. And I, and I think, and you realize this, I'm like, why would that be an issue? And you get people get, well, I'll let you explain. What's the biggest mistake people make? Well, we see a lot of times the biggest mistake that we have seen consumers make is, I know everybody believes in, because all the internet's going to tell you, to look at multiple estimates, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you called, how I feel about it is you can do most of your research about a company by just looking at their reviews. And right. what ends up happening is a consumer looks and they go and get five estimates. Every single one of these estimates are gonna be all way different numbers and all it does is leave the customer really confused. Cause they're like, why is this guy cheaper than this guy? Why is this guy, you know, they may go get a, a chuck in the truck and that chuck in the truck with no no li no license, no nothing, might be the cheapest guy they get. And then they may go to a huge company, and it's absolutely ridiculous pricing. And then they may get a couple more guys in the middle. Then at that point, you know, customers are just really confused. And then you have to explain, you know, hey, you know, this is what you're paying for. You're paying for a five star service. We're going to answer the phone when you call every single time. You're paying for big warranties. You're paying for able being able to have a, a you know a payment plans or whatever it may be. You're paying for the service is what you're paying for because right. anybody can really do the work will they do it efficiently will they do it properly yeah that's in the air but <laughs> when it comes to actually getting what you pay for a five-star premier company like pots electric is something that we take pride in and that's something that is seen all over the internet is you know we make sure that what's done right the first time and we don't have to worry you know that anything's going to happen once we leave that job yeah, I want to put up these reviews again, but take a look, take this seriously, because you want to evaluate somebody, you can do your research, and that's why we do these interviews, and I, I didn't think about making that point, but uh, when somebody gets to see a professional interview of you and your company talking on a reputable network like you see with ABC, in this case, and uh, yeah, because this is a big decision for a lot of people, and you don't just want to go off and willy-nilly pick somebody that you may or may not know too well, but this adds a lot of credibility to people that you will take the time, and we, we pick people very carefully that we allow to be on our show. So we really are proud of you guys for coming on here to join us to talk about your expertise and learn from these guys because they really do know what they're talking about. Um, that reminds me of another quote from Dad. Dad up there in the baseball stadium in the sky. We're going to spring training here in a couple days uh, for, for a few days. But um, there, there's a there's a, the saying my dad used to always tell me it was cheap can be very expensive and you had another caveat to that that made sense okay. too. explain that for me if you so will. i always you know let people know you know it, when you deal with the workings of the business and, and and dealing with you know pricing and stuff like that is always let customers know you know you have three options you can have cheap fast or good if it's good and fast it ain't cheap if it's cheap and fast it ain't good you know so it just you can, you only get to pick two of those <laughs> uh you know because at the end of the day if you want it done right and professionally it's not going to be a fast you know, it's, it's not going to be a cheap job, yeah. essentially. So, you know, we, we want to make sure that we're giving the customer the best prices as possible. But at the same time, you know, we have to make sure that we're, we're covering our butt because we are a flat rate company. So we don't charge by the hour. Like most companies get in there and they might say, hey, it's going to be X amount of dollars an hour. Well, how easy would it be to just sit there and milk a clock? Right. Versus us, we're flat rate, upfront costing. Here's what you pay before we touch anything. Okay. Here's what you pay. You're able to sign that agreement. Nothing changes. No no price changes. Once you sign that agreement, if we run into problems, we take care of it and, and we don't charge you more money. Customers get on there and review about that too, and they absolutely love that. 
Well, that's that's key to this because a lot of people their budget's set and they and they, they have to come up with extra money. They're like, wow, how did that come about? Mm -hmm. Why didn't we foresee that? Oh, I didn't realize that this problem here, this that's closet right. had an extra whatever the the ex explanation may be. But uh, stay on the ball and give them that upfront. So it's not an hourly rate. Yeah, you get the hourly rate. You're talking probably a hundred bucks, hundred fifty bucks an hour. More to, than that, somebody's yeah. going to ever do for any kind of mm -hmm. electric work, and uh, it can get to be very expensive. So you're saying um, if you get multiple. Um, estimates that's fine except that now you really got to decipher what's going on there and right. the average person is probably not going to be able to figure out what the difference is between well that's them. when people make mistakes is because they get confused and they're like okay let's just go with uh let's go with the lower options because it looks better on paper but you know i always tell my customers i hate for you to find out we're the right company for you the wrong way so that seems to be it happens here and there lately i'll be honest it doesn't happen as much anymore people know who they're calling they know who we are when we come out there. They know we're going to give them, we, you know, one of our core values is integrity, you know, and that's doing the right thing when no one's looking. So that's something that we pride ourselves yep. on. And, you know, I think people have been able to see that. And, you know, going forward, it's been a lot. People are, know when they call us, hey, this is the company I want because so-and-so have told them about us right. or whatever it may be. Yeah. Well, word spreads fast and, over, you know, over almost 800 reviews with everything you guys have. Is it yep. more than that? that you, and, 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 uh, with just coming around four years in business, but 12 years in the industry. Yeah. And just somebody that really knows what they're doing here. Well, with that, I always like to ask them, what, how has technology changed the way? Because electricity is pretty much electricity. is either there or it's not. But now you've got USB and you've got multiple outlets and you've got uh, big power things you need to put on there. How has the technology changed that you have had to adapt? You talk about you send your guys to training. You spend a lot of money on training to get the latest trends in electrical. We do. Uh, resources. Tell me about that. So we send our guys all over the country. I mean, whether that be Florida, whether that be New York, whether that be Minnesota, we send our guys to, I, I make sure that I, you know, and it costs the company a lot of money to shut it down for a day or two to send everybody to these trainings. But I feel like to give my customers the absolute best service possible, this is what I have to do. I have to keep my guys up to, up to code, up to date with everything going on and making sure that they're trained and they're giving a customer a five-star experience every single time. And the technology, how has it how has it changed as a matter of the way it's implemented, the way that the, the I mean, the higher voltage. I mean, what are the biggest things that we've seen? It's pretty much electricity's been the way it has been. Are you talking about now? You've got chargers where you set your phone on there, and is that yeah. different? And how does it transfer the energy? And what are all the innovations we've got to worry about with electricity, especially if you start getting into lighting and when you've got your bathroom and your showers and and those kinds of things? How complicated can this get? It can get very complicated, especially when you're trying to calculate like lumens and stuff like that. Like how, what are we actually trying to get out of this, right? Like how bright do you want your kitchen, right? It's right. just, you know, we get a little bit more in depth than just, hey, let me throw a couple lights in there and call it good. You know, we're going to be more in depth of like how bright do you want your kitchen? Do you want it on dimmers? You know, when you're talking about chargers and stuff, you know, we go into houses all the time where we see people have... Uh, you know, the six prong extended outlets where you can plug a bunch of stuff into the surge right. protection right. outlets that you plug into. And they have these things tapped on tapped on tapped hundred things plugged into Daisy these chain. daisy chained. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they got two outlets in their bedroom. And so they want to put this thing in here and plug everything in chargers, everything. And then they wonder, you know, why is this, why is this smoking? Like it's, <laughs> it, you know, these chargers and stuff, man, these, these things that, you know, you start adding 10 of them to a one deal, there's a, you know, there's an issue. Your lab charge charger, um, you know, the biggest innovations I would say would be car chargers though. That would be the biggest thing that's been coming over the last few years that has been really kicking off is these car chargers. I mean, it's every day we're getting, we're doing car chargers for people. Um, and that's a huge load demand on your panel for sure. Is that a standard 240 or what, how, what, what, what's a normal charge charger, char car charger? What is it when Florida have that installed? Is it? What, well, what you're, you, you, most of the time people are going to choose something that's going to be a little bit more, um, it's going to charge their car faster, right? right? Cause you could plug into a 120. There's right. plenty of adapters to do that, but it might take 24 hours to plug, charge your car right. versus you get a 50 amp circuit, which is a 240 and get a new circuit out there ran. And we've been installing them on disconnect. So that way everything is safe and brought up to code on that end. Cause it is a, you know, a direct current it's going, it's, it's, it's going to be a, uh, you know, it's, it's nonstop. It's running voltage through nonstop, you know, so we want to make sure that we, um, we're, we're doing those safely, but that would be the biggest amp draw that people are adding here lately, other than like maybe your hot tub or your pool. Right. But that's, what's been happening a lot lately. We've been installing the, those a lot. And it's important to get those up to code, like you mentioned, because how often does that have something? Well, my brother-in-law can do this, right? And, but if he, 
anything comes of issue, you burn the house down, the insurance company comes back and says, sorry, you're going to build your own house mm -hmm. now because you didn't get this done. That We, we tracked back that this thing was not installed correctly or professionally. That's why it's very important to have it licensed a licensed company get a permit. So we install we anything we do, we're hire, we're getting a permit. We're gonna have the county come look at it and sign off on it because that's just the way you want to do any kind of job in your house when it comes to electrical. Is you know just make sure it's a licensed bond insured company and they're pulling a permit. And I think that'd be your best bet on anything. Yeah, because a, a permit's really protecting you, right? Because you wouldn't make sure right. somebody says, "Hey, this thing is done." You talked about these days the, the perm they've gotten so strict, you can't even change your outlets inside your house That's right. without a permit because you're tapping in electrical. That's just right. a couple wires got to be undone there. But uh, yeah, I've blown a couple outlets in my house, <laughs> and we just don't use that outlet anymore. Right. But right. if you want to have that thing changed, you might have to get a permit to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Most a lot of counties are switching over to that. I mean, it's been every code cycle that comes out there's new codes that are being implemented and every single day you know where they they come up with these codes based off of experiences based right. off of what's the most safe way to make sure that these houses don't burn down or there's not major issues you know these codes don't just you know they don't just fly up they, they they're built off of experiences and what we can do to make the safer make a safer environment so uh, you know we make sure we implement the current code standards yeah, that's true because in the United States, we've been fortunate. We set a high standard. Yeah. You hear about these other third world countries, et cetera, where the whole town burnt down or mm -hmm. the electrical or the water or, or the building structure. And just we held a high standard here. And we have buildings in this country now that are two and three hundred or more years old because yep. they were built with such sturdy and high uh, uh, guidelines. Electricity, though, I mean, I just think about uh, my parents own a house. My dad passed to the next level. My mom has it. I've been working with her on it. It's a nice, beautiful house, old Victorian home in Fayette, Missouri. And we're going to turn it into an Airbnb also, I believe. And uh, But the electrical, some of the electrical stuff, they've run it after. They didn't have electricity when they built this house in 1845. Mm -hmm. So now you've got to have electrical added retro, if you will. And so they're putting it in the, in the what kind of pipe? Are those aluminum pipes? What kind of pipes are they running these things in? And you can see them sometimes inside the walls. But those are things, I mean gosh, you got to have electricity. What's the best way to manage something like that? Um, I mean, it, what you're talking about is EMT. And, you know, that's something that, you know, if we can, most of the time when an old house like that, you're talking about mortar. I mean, you're talking about a, um, I'm sorry. Uh, um, well, it's got brick inside the house. Yeah, it's got brick inside the house. And a lot of time you're dealing with uh, plaster. Yeah. plaster and lath yeah so right. that's yeah. that's something you don't want to mess with <laughs> if you can be avoided like a lot of times we'll add surface mounted stuff okay. just because i tell people it's very difficult to find somebody that can patch plaster like it's not something you could just you got to know what you're doing to patch plaster so you know that's that's a tough one yeah most of the time they do install the tubing just because it's they don't want to cut holes in plaster and stuff sure. like that and then if you can't because it's brick Obviously, there's nothing you can do. You can't make, cut holes out and run wire inside bricks. So. Yeah, no, this house has yeah. brick inside the house. I promise if there's ever the apocalypse or anything crazy goes to happen, You're good. we're going down there because <laughs> they can bomb the heck out of it. Yeah. Thick brick walls on the outside, on the inside. But that's just part of what you deal with in, in the older houses. And it went in St. Charles, St. Louis, St. Louis City. Yes. Um, areas you got a lot of older houses i guess out there and you run into that periodically you've got to come in and retrofit another way to do that. what kind of tubing is that is it metal or is it yeah, aluminum what kind metal. of what are those made out of um so it's a it's metallic tubing okay. so it's yeah it's metal um it's uh basically that's our only cat only way to do it okay. in those old houses that are all brick or they're all like you know they're whatever the walls if, it, if we can't get inside the walls we have to run tubing i mean it's just yeah. it is what it is so we we try not to but you know in those situations we have to well i, I can only imagine there's a lot of that that has to be done these days there's a ton of it on the older houses mm -hmm. and uh just get anything you said i mean amazing uh, back as early as 1990 not that yeah. they had brick walls at that time but the wires in there can be worn and just the breakers aren't powerful enough so ladies and gentlemen find yourself an expert right here cody potts and make sure you call these guys to get this done for yourself because you don't want to second guess. You don't want to halfway do this right. You want to make sure you get it done right the mm -hmm. first time. Uh, do it right the first time costs you a lot less than tearing it out. How many times do you have to tear out somebody else's work? Multiple. Come back and fix it. Multiple times, yeah. <laughs> if it's it. not permitted and you know the county comes in and they look at it and they say, hey, this wasn't permitted, we have to rip it all out because we can't certify what somebody else did. You know, right. So we have to rip it all out and redo it. So we run into that a lot where customers hire somebody without 
no license bond in insuring and they can't pull a permit yeah and then we end up having to rip it all out and redo it and then oh, they end geez. up paying twice <laughs> yeah it's a lot more yeah expense added there everybody that you don't want to have to do well tell me a time that you you've, you've got so many reviews i could just go through a number of your reviews but give me an example of somebody where you really had to go out of your way to help somebody you found they were in a tough situation maybe they had somebody that didn't pull the permits or they just kind of did it the brother-in-law thing we joke joke about yeah but but you had to come through and help somebody give me an example of that if you would Okay, so I know I think of several of them that we've <laughs> we've done now that other companies have made some mistakes on. One in, in particular I'm thinking of is um, a, a client of ours. I'll just say her name, Ashley, and she had a customer or she had a company come in and they could not pass permit, and they ended up having her. She didn't have power for over a year. She had to live with someone else for about a year. And we were able to get that permit finally pulled off of that company and pulled to us. And we had it done within a week. We had it done. Wow. You can imagine somebody can't live in a house because the permits, they were just sitting on it, kind of trying to, yep. what were they doing? I mean, for a year, yeah. that's a little expensive because you're paying for one place and you're living with somebody else. Yep. You got to pay to live there. Holy cow. That gets to be a real expensive job. You came in. How quickly did you get that done? About a week. Yeah. Yeah. They, wow. could, they couldn't pass a permit with through the county and Ameren wouldn't approve what they were doing. And they just, you know, where they were giving her the, well, we'll be out next next couple of weeks. We'll be out. And then it just kept happening and happening. And, oh, wow. Yeah. And so we were able to get her taken care of. And she she left that review on there as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, if you if Ameren's not going to approve it, then you're stuck because they yes. are the ones that provide the electricity. Depending on what part of St. Louis, we're Quiver River where I live. Okay. And it's a little bit different. But still, if they're, they're going to have people to check this thing out. I didn't realize they, they will come out, the Ameren themselves will come out. And look at a job or do they look yeah. at the plans or how do they determine whether or not something's going to be allowed for them them to turn the electricity on we work with the Ameren engineer so a lot of stuff that clients don't see behind the scenes is stuff like the like working with the engineers with Ameren. like once we do go through with the job or whatever with the customer um, we're starting to get on the phone with Ameren and pulling you know we have to have certain things approved from Ameren before we can even start the work and we get on the ball with that and start getting that done but a lot of times we deal with a lot of Ameren engineering to make sure that it's going to be approved to proper standards before we can even start the work before we even have a another company you know uh, the county come out and inspect it and say it's good as well okay well yeah I, you guys are on the ball let's say somebody's ready to go what's the process for somebody they said Cody I want to hire you what do they do what, what's the process for them so typically how we do it is we go out and we make sure we do like a check out what they're wanting done you know okay. make sure that you know we we're both on the same page of what they're wanting done we'll do an evaluation a safety evaluation while we're looking at everything if we notice anything we'll just let the client know hey just so you know this is this and this um, if it's major safety issues basically we'll have to tell them hey look you know we really need to get this taken care of we'll write up three or four options for them whatever's the best needs for them and their families for the best investment for them we'll write up three or four options they say let's go Essentially, what we do is we get on the, on the ball right then and there to get a permit, um, get the permit pulled, get the material pulled, and we're usually ready to go within a day or two. Well, it sounds like you guys have got a pretty slick system there to make sure that people get it done right because yep. you don't want to cut corners when you're doing electrical mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, you can see there, I pulled up the website for everybody to see there, but check it out. Pots Electric, P-O-T-T-S, electric.com. And great information there, easy to get started phone number, everything easy for, for people to find. I also want to show with everybody, you got a lot of great work. You got some uh, panels over here I was checking out. Yes. Um, I'm gonna switch over to the other TV wall we've got here, but some some generators mm -hmm. and then panels. You can see, oh my gosh, let's look at some of these panels and then just some finished work you've got and a bunch of reviews here. So pick out one of these and tell me a little bit about it, That you, what you're, what's going on here. Okay, we can go to like that right there, that picture. Yep. Okay. That's a melted breaker. That's a melted main breaker. That's okay. what I was telling you about earlier. Was a melted main breaker. That's a melted main breaker. That's a main breaker. Main breaker that uh, controls your panel, that controls all the electricity flow inside your entire house. When these things get hot, they start to melt. They start to actually physically melt, and uh, people start smelling fishy smells. They start smelling like burnt plastic, stuff like that. It wasn't my cooking. It was No, <laughs> it wasn't the cooking. All right. It wasn't the cooking. It was just an overloaded uh, electrical panel on this one. You could tell it was really old and it was definitely overloaded. Okay, and so that's just, how old is it something like that? Is it, can, can that happen to anybody, I guess, depending on what kind of load they're putting on? That's a system. Challenger panel, so that one's from the 90s. Okay, from I, the 90s. I just seen the breaker. <laughs> All right, and you can tell by looking at it. Yeah. I'm just gonna hit the next arrow and see what we have. There's your, your logo, 
you guys are on the ball with that. Yeah, and, uh, gotcha. got some cool logos. But check them out, Pots. Tell me now, this is what kind of a breaker, what kind of a system we got going on here? So this is an old system that we pulled out as well. Um, you can see on the bus bars, they're starting. The colors are discolored. They're changing. And okay. this was probably something. I'm trying to figure out. I mean, we're missing screws on this one. I don't know if this was an abandoned house that we maybe came and remediated. Um, but yeah, you could definitely tell this thing is old. It's definitely wore its course. Those breakers right there, that's a that's also a challenger breaker. Um, I know it doesn't say it, but it is. Oh yeah, it does on the smaller ones. But yeah, that's, those are, I gotta say that, you know, from the 90s, that was probably one of the main ones that we've been pulling out lately that have been melted. Oh, really? Even older, even even more than the ones that are 60, from the 60s and 70s. You know, those happen all the time too, but probably not as much as these do. Well, that's where they got into say, here's how we're gonna save money by and this, we have a lot of people, a lot of countries around the world, I, I hear joke about the United States is just a recycle uh, system where they just build they something do. cheap, get it to last a few years, and then come in and get it replaced and, uh, and, and buy another one, right? But in, it doesn't have to be that way. Here's a pretty interesting one. What's going on in here? Mm, this is a main distribution center. We okay. did some service work on this. Wow, so there's a lot control going on. boards and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they could they could control some nuclear stuff <laughs> yeah. going on there. Yeah. But uh, well, it sounds like you guys have got to cover from top to bottom experts to make sure that when you're going to get electrical work done, you do it right. Um, Pots Electric. Man, I wish I had started my company at a young age like yourself. Uh, but having the knowledge and expertise that you've got, man, you guys are really on the ball. It's good to see you guys doing uh, great work. Uh, so tell me, what's a, what's a challenge that you often run into or a challenge you've run into with your business that we can help people to maybe learn from a little bit to say, oh man, when we were getting started, we were doing this or we were this or we've run into this particular issue and it made a difference with when we, you learn from it, of course. Uh, how often does that happen? Give me an example of something like that. Biggest one be, and it's the hardest one, but it's the biggest one, is making the right hires. You can have one guy sink your ship. So it's one of those deals that you have to make the right hire so for us you know obviously we're on a different different playing field than we were when i started the company right but when i started the company it was just me i was doing i was working probably 100 hours a week seven days a week i was doing all the installs myself and eventually we got to a point where i had to keep hiring people and uh you know when you're not able to offer full health insurance dental vision you know all the good perks and stuff that we offer now you know, it's really hard to find good people. And I think that's the biggest challenge when you start a company is finding good people that's not going, that's going to have your best company, uh, have the company's best interest. Well, uh, there you said it, because, uh, yeah, boy, getting good people to work with, I'm very fortunate. Um, Dawn giving you a shout out. Uh, we got John working with us now, but Dawn and I've been working together for almost two years. Hey, man, I, I don't know what I would do, but she uh, she makes sure. But get somebody solid that you know you can count on. It gets it has the same vision with you, I guess. That's right. kind of weird, especially Absolutely. when you're getting started. You'll be on the same page. Make sure that you're all on the same page mm -hmm. to make this thing grow the way you want to. And that's an important one. We ask that tip from everybody, but uh, you're the first one who brought that one up as an answer. Yeah. I like that. Well, tell me then, um, what's a, what's a major objection? Is it always price, or what are people? What are the questions people normally have? We say, well, I like this, but I have a few questions. What's an objection a lot of times you have to help explain to somebody? A lot of it is price. I mean, we get objections where people are like, well, I wasn't expecting this because I Googled it, you know, <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, I've got buddies that own companies in Washington right now, and they're charging $10,000 just to change your panel out. They're not paying more for the material. It's just the way that, you know, what are they, what is this company offering wow. to their people? What are the, because to get good, genuine people, you have to make sure that you have you're offering the right benefits and the right stuff. So at the end of the day, you need to make sure that, uh, you know, the customer understands, hey, you're getting warranties, you're getting service, you're getting the best. People are actually happy to be there that work for me. They're actually happy to be there <laughs> right. versus they're mad when they get to the door. You know, so those are all major things that, uh, you know, that we that we, we deal with. Well, you see, a good tip there. I, I like how I brought up, and I love Google, and we all get a lot of information from Google, but don't trust, don't, don't try to be Google certified don't be the google expert it's going to come in and tell them how to do their job because you've done uh, a few youtube searches and videos with that uh and you're going to save money and end up people can put themselves in a bad situation where they've got trying to tell somebody and you're going i mean is there ever a time when you say we're just going to, have to walk away from this Disney. oh absolutely we're not going to do this absolutely we've had people that it was like a five or six thousand dollars is a huge job a big job and people were like, well, I was thinking like 500 bucks because Google said 500 <laughs> Google bucks. Said 
I was like, you think any company would actually give them their price book and say, hey, guys, this is what you should tell everybody they need to be charging. I was like, well, if they did that, then they feel like they're charging more and they just kind of set somebody up there because that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, yeah, when you start bringing into consideration, you know, we run the same business model that any company really should run is 50% material and labor, 40% overhead and 10% profit. Okay. Lights don't stay on if you don't make something. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, we all got to make sure. We want, I want to be able to call you years later and say, hey, can yeah, you come back and fix this or upgrade this or change something else we got that we got to get, um, uh, make sure this thing's done right the right mm -hmm. way. And uh, yeah, those margins are thin, but if you're doing things right by volume, you can make a good living and, Absolutely. and get some work down here. So stay in touch with these guys. Cody Potts, owner and founder of Potts Electric, Electric here in St. Louis, um, based out of Fenton, but you're servicing all of St. Fenton's a great location. You get on Highway 44, 27. You're there. You're everywhere yeah, in St. Louis. Right. Pretty quickly, you can help service everybody in a quick, fast, and in a hurry, but not quick, fast, and in a hurry. You can't get all three can't fast. Can't get all three, you get two. <laughs> and, and, and done right, sure. uh, as we talked about before. So uh, talk to Cody. He'll make sure to get this done for you the right way. Well, as we finish up here, a couple of things I always like to touch on. Um, what, what is it that really gives you the most satisfaction about what you're doing here? When, it, when At the end of the day, after another 60, 70, 80 hour week, what makes you feel best about what you're doing? I would say, and it's probably the answer maybe everyone gives, but it's for, like I said, it's our core value, one of our core values, and, it, and it's something that I, we live with our core values, and I make sure that my employees do, but just making sure that people are doing honest work and making sure you sleep at night. Right. Like right. for me, if I know I did the right thing all day long, when I go to sleep, I don't worry about anything because I know I did the right thing from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep. And then I have no worries. So I would say that just being honest and, and that, that's the main thing for me. That makes life easier. You do things right. You treat people right. Things come around. They do. That's, uh, I learned a long time ago. I started doing this Cardinal Cowboy thing. And I go, Mom, one thing is that people, they all know who I am. They remember me. <laughs> and so that's I better right. always be doing what's right. I felt like that's the standard you would have wanted me to hold anyway. So uh, 100%. it just keep, it helps us keep us all on top of it, on, on the ball. Um, well, how do you feel you and your company most contribute? Do you have any particular charities that you like most? Or what do you do in the community? Or how do you feel like, I mean, just giving people a nice safe house to live in is a big thing. But what do you like most about what you do in it to help our little planet? So I'm part of like the Chamber of Commerce and stuff like that. And we try to do donations with them. And we to make sure that like we were sponsored to the Chesterfield hockey team. I sponsored the team. Oh, wow. You know, we made sure that we we were able to help them out. And, you know, anywhere that I can make contributions, I will. Um, you know, when that's something that we've been working for, go, working towards more and more of as we're able to finally start getting off the ground and start getting bigger of a company, we're able to start doing more um, charity donations and stuff like that. So that's something I'm proud that we're finally able to start doing, you know, when you don't have the money, you don't. But now that we're able to start like getting off the ground a little bit, I feel like it's, it's, it's big to give back to the community. Yeah, see, it seems that when you give back to the community, things come back and go your way. And uh, it's just a cycle of our little planet here. I wish that a lot of people understand there's some crazy stuff going on in our world, it seems. And they're like, oh, we're going to conquer this. Or we're going to take this over. Yeah, and then they're going to be upset and they're going to fight you back. But if you help people, That's right. it comes back around and makes your life a lot easier. Too. It does. All right, ladies and gentlemen, great information here. Great uh, resource for you if you're looking for an expert electrical company, Potts Electric. Cody, my buddy here, is on the ball, knows what he's doing, and can take care of you and your family. So... Get a hold of them. Go to Potts Electric, PottsElectric.com, and they will make sure to get you taken care of for all your electrical needs. Right here, all serving the St. Louis metro area. Yep. All right. And he sponsors sports and hockey teams and, and sports teams. So that's a big thing, too, because sports is what teaches us these kids a lot of what they need to do to, to make it in this little world. Stay tuned for more, everybody. It's your little castle show.